Are you sitting in a space where you are struggling with anxiety? Do you feel like a prisoner to the cycles of depression? Do you feel stuck in your own life and feel frustrated and lost, but yet you know there is so much more on the other side of this mental breakdown? I want to hold your hand through this therapeutic life healing journey. I will help you navigate emotional healing, spiritual growth, and taking massive action so you can align your mind, body, and spirit to completely transforming your life. You are worthy of the life of your dreams, of stepping into your power and experiencing your breakdown as your breakthrough. Hey, I'm Adi. I'm your therapist, your coach, your mentor. Join me as we heal your life together. Hello, welcome back to Therapeutic Life Healing with me, your host, Adi. So great that you found this podcast. If you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you found me. And I hope that I am able to help you along your healing journey. If you've been continuing to come back week after week, I am so thankful for you for being here, for subscribing to the podcast. I read all your reviews. I appreciate each and every single one of you taking time out of your life to tune in. I want to give some shout outs to folks from all around the world tuning in. Today's topic is going to be on burnout. And I'll go into a little bit more about what is burnout, how does that look in your life, and some ways that you can work through it. Before we dive in, I want to say hello to friends out in the U.S. and Japan. I see you. Friends out in Canada, Australia. Hello out in India and the Philippines. Hello friends in Mexico, Kenya, Romania, Slovakia. I see you friends out in the UK, Vietnam, Germany, Switzerland, the Dominican Republic. Hello friends out in Guam and Sweden, just to name a few. Thank you for being here. I really, really just love seeing folks tuning in from everywhere, referring me to your friends and family, telling them to tune in and check out episodes that might be helpful to them. That means the world to me. If you're on social media, be sure to tag me in your favorite episode, share it in your stories, and definitely let me know which episodes have been helping you. Send me an email and let me know. My favorite part is getting to connect with you. So if you have some time, send me an email at hello at aditsi.com. If you have an idea for an episode, for a topic, send me an email and let's connect. My email is also in the show notes and also on my website. Now onto the topic of burnout. Burnout is something I have definitely felt myself time and time again. So it's something that is normal, it's common. Many of you have felt burnout, but you probably didn't even know that that's what you were experiencing at the time. Being burned out, it just means we're basically feeling empty. We're feeling mentally exhausted. We could be feeling physically exhausted. We have a lack of motivation. We're just beyond caring, right? We just have this decision fatigue. We might even have empathy fatigue or compassion fatigue. People are just experiencing burnout, especially through this last year. And in these times, people are just overwhelmed. So you're definitely not alone. And this episode is meant to help you notice the signs first. Because you might be in this place and you don't even know you're experiencing burnout, but you just feel this disconnection from yourself. You feel disconnected from others. You might feel disconnected from your life. And so once we identify what it is, then you can have language to know what's going on and then be able to take steps to do something about it to help you and support you. So you might be in that place today where you're like, yes, Adi, I am feeling the burn. (laughs) Like I am tapped out. I am feeling all sorts of like done. My cup is empty. I have no cup even right now. You're just drowning in responsibility. You're maybe feeling pulled in so many directions and feel like everyone is needing you or needing attention to to so many different things going on in your life and in the world. And it's exhausting. And you might just want to hide. So many people right now when I meet with them um, are saying that they just want to escape. That might look like wanting to escape to an island when, when with nobody around or just curl up into a ball in bed and not get up for a few days and turn off all social media, their phone, the TV, and just 
hide out and not talk to anybody. So you might be in that place and this might be resonating for you. Now, some things to think about is where you might be feeling your burnout. It could be because something connected to maybe time management, stress management, boundaries, mindset, personal care, habits, or lifestyle. Those are some categories that might need some evaluation and examining from you and seeing like, is there something there that I need to do differently to help me? Unfortunately, too, I know that when we experience burnout, we don't often have the time or the energy to seek out help. We don't find the energy or the time to even seek out solutions. So I hope that this podcast and the few minutes that we're together can be a spark to remotivate you or ignite you to do something about what you're experiencing because there are things to do. Language is so important to just have about burnout because we're not taught about this in school. We're not told, you know, what burnout feels like at work. And in fact, our employers most of the time encourage burnout, right? They reward burnout if you're working on the weekends or overtime and it just is rewarded. So you think that that's normal to just keep really stretching yourself in this way, right? Friends might be telling you you're such a good friend because you're always there for everybody. And you're like, yeah, but who's there for me? So many professionals in the field are exhausted. Um, so many friends are tired and just not feeling supported in their relationships, family members. It's just, you know, really showing up everywhere. Parents, right? Parenting is really hard. You might be caring for a loved one someone who is sick. So sometimes it's hard to even know where to start. And I'd like to first say that the best starting place is noticing the signs. So I said a few signs that may have resonated for you earlier, but this is where I'm really going to get into the specifics. So if you have a pen and paper handy, I would grab that and write down the signs that resonate for you. So that way you have a list of the signs that you really feel like, oh, that's me. That is me. (laughs) Like you want to raise your hand and you want to just come out from like your headset and shake me and be like, Adit, that's me. So let's get to them. I'm just going to run through them quickly. So burnout can look like little to no motivation, insomnia, emotionally overwhelmed, exhaustion, physically or mentally, feel like your anxiety is high, easily triggered. Internally, you might feel just emotionally exhausted. You might feel more cynical where before you are usually optimistic. You feel detached from yourself, from others, from your work, from your purpose. You feel ineffective. You might feel drained before the beginning of the day. You might feel anxiety before the workday even starts or at night. You also might feel like you're forgetting things. You have a hard time concentrating. You might feel like you want to escape, kind of what I was saying earlier. You just kind of want to hide away from everybody. You just want to isolate, withdraw. You feel like increased irritability. You feel increased irritability. Like everyone's just getting on your nerves. You're annoyed by things that normally don't annoy you. But right now, everything and everyone is like pissing you off. You feel like you might be even getting sick. Like you're coming down with a cold or a headache. You might feel like your body just is achy. You might be procrastinating more than usual, even if you do it before. It just feels like really heightened right now. Uh, You might be turning to food for comfort or potentially drugs or alcohol. You notice a change in your diet and, again, might just feel all this physical pain along with this mental exhaustion. Those are some of the signs of burnout. And 
they can also be categorized in three different types. So there's kind of this boredom of burnout. Like this is, I'm feeling unsatisfied and uninspired in my life because of various things going on in my life. And I just feel stuck and unsure of what to do next in my life. The second type might be the volume. You just feel like you're booked back to back constantly and consistently so much that it feels like out of control. You feel like you're running yourself on empty often and that so many people are just constantly reaching out to you and you're not having enough time for yourself. So you're just constantly between work and personal life feeling drained. Social. You might struggle to set boundaries, time management. You might have a hard time with having people in your personal life really respect your boundaries or your professional life. They might not respect that you have boundaries and don't want to work on the weekends or on the evenings. And you might get this indirect, you know, um, fear that feeling from them that that's not okay and they expect you to be working evenings and checking your emails on the weekends many people that tune into this podcast would identify themselves as also recovering people pleasers where you just please people myself included and so social is a type of burnout too so there's just these three different categories if you will to think about for burnout for yourself in your life Next, I want you to notice the burnout cycle in your life, because likely this isn't the first time you feel this way. You probably have felt this before. And I shared this and I share this and understand this feeling, this burnout cycle. So it starts with feeling overwhelmed and you're stretched thin. And then because of that, you start feeling helpless. You feel defeated, tired, trapped, stuck. You might feel guilty for feeling that way. And then you feel resentful for the people who have put you, quote unquote, in this place. Then because of that, you feel a loss of motivation, pleasure. You have a decreased satisfaction with your life. Then that leads you to feeling alone and a desire to isolate from everyone. Does that sound familiar, that cycle? I want you to really imagine the circle, right? This, these arrows that lead to one thing, to the next, to the next. And it creates this burnout cycle, right? So the first sign is noticing that when you feel overwhelmed and stretched, that's a beginning sign of the burnout starting because then that's going to lead to feeling the helplessness, then feeling guilty, the lack of motivation, and then wanting to isolate, right? By the time you get to that point where you just want to escape to an island where there's nobody, not a cell phone, not a person in sight, that's when you have like, you have tapped out. You're at the end of your burnout cycle. So if that's you today or anywhere along that cycle, I'm gonna invite you to the next step. So the first step is to notice what burnout looks like for you. Notice if that's you today, right? Just highlight the signs that stood out to you. Then the next step now is to Go through how to interrupt this burnout cycle. I'm going to go through those steps with you. And then at the end, we're going to pick one of those things for you to do so that you can start that interrupting today. So first thing is how to interrupt the burnout cycle is identify one to two ways to lighten your load immediately. This is not the time to be people pleasing and saying yes to people. This is like May Day, May Day, your house is on fire, your cup is empty. This is not the time to play nice. And it's really important, especially if all of those signs have resonated with you, especially if many of those signs resonated, you're not sleeping, you're not eating well, like those are really not okay. And it's so important that you get back to baseline, that you get back to this homeostasis place in your life. And so the only way to really do that is taking drastic measures, right? You have to take drastic steps. So this is important to take immediate action and identify one to two ways to lighten your load immediately. 
And by doing that, it's time to evaluate your current commitments and consider canceling or rescheduling them. What is on your plate right now that can be canceled? What commitment can you cancel? What thing can you reschedule? An appointment? Um, Can you put your phone on airplane mode? Can you shut your phone off for a few hours? Can you take a social media detox? What about taking a day off or a couple days off or more than that if you're able to? Where can you just lighten your load? That's immediate. That's the immediate step and evaluate what you can take off your plate. Then talk to somebody you trust, someone that you really feel like connected to, that can hold space for you, that you feel supported by, and just invite help in from them. Let them help you. This can be a friend, it could be a professional, it could be someone that, you know, um, maybe might even be in your church, in your spiritual community. It could be a Facebook group, support group, you know, just consider talking to somebody that you trust. If you don't have anybody, this might be a good time to think about investing in your mental health and reaching out to a therapist, a life coach, and having them by your side for just a few sessions to support you out of this cycle. And then lastly, really evaluate afterwards your your boundaries. This is a good time to notice how you can implement some mental, social, and emotional boundaries and financial boundaries, potentially, depending on the situation that you're in. This is a good time to think about, okay, I'm burnt out because likely my boundaries have been crossed. I've been pushed too far. I've been overextending myself. I've been saying yes too much. And I have nothing left to give anybody. And so I have to set boundaries and really pour back into my cup. This is so important to just go back to the basics, really begin to take time, even on your day off, that you are able to just even take a shower and go for a walk, listen to your favorite songs, watch a movie, read a book. I mean, there's so many ideas that, you know, I can give you, but just the the most important thing, I don't want to overwhelm you because if you are in that place, that might feel like a lot right now. But the most important thing is to notice the signs and then interrupt the burnout cycle. And by interrupting it, you just have to take drastic measures just for the moment. This doesn't mean forever. This just means for right now. And then you can come back after you feel a little bit more clear headed. You feel a little bit more like yourself. You got to return back to home and internally. What I mean by home is like go back to your heart space. And when you feel connected back to like who you are and what you're about, what makes you happy, then you can come back to setting boundaries and noticing like, okay, moving forward, here's what's not going to be okay anymore. Or here's what I really need moving forward. But until you can first get to a place of just rest and turning things off for a little bit and talking to somebody who can really hear you and support you, it's going to be really hard to interrupt that burnout cycle. So these steps are super important to you and your well-being. You are worthy of that. You are worthy of support. You are worthy of help. Let them in to help you, whoever that person is, and trust your journey. This will be okay. It takes time to notice the signs, so don't be mad at yourself for not knowing or having gotten to this place. It happens. We're in a busy, crazy world. There's a lot going on. I mean, we're all all still navigating a pandemic. So be kind to yourself through this time. You're likely doing more than you think you are. You're probably an overachiever. You're demanding perfection from yourself. And that's not achievable. None of us are perfect. And it's okay to mess up. It's okay to say no to people. It's okay if somebody gets mad at you. It's what's necessary, you know, remembering that 
if people love you, they want you to take care of yourself too. Sometimes it's more us, our internal pressure that we put on ourselves to perform, to be there for everybody. But if we can just communicate and tell people like, hey, I am tapped out. My cup is empty. I'm going to break. I cannot go on like this. So I need to take a day off. I need to just be by myself. Don't call me and leave me alone and let me rest for a little bit and let me get back to the things I love and then do something that you love. Go for a run, go for a walk, take a nice shower, call a friend, schedule that appointment with that therapist, you know, do the things that will return back to yourself. Maybe you're an artist and you need to you know, draw, you need to color, you need to paint, you need to create something with your hands. You need to be in mother nature because you need to just feel connected to earth and, you know, disconnect from social media and the news. And then notice what feels good to you. Lastly, after all of this, at the end, when you feel better, when you feel your cup is full, notice what you did that helped you. And start doing those things more often. Be comfortable with starting to say no and not taking on so much in your life. And people will be understanding. And if they're not, they're entitled to. And you're also entitled to taking care of yourself. So it's a really great opportunity for yourself to grow in this way. And so Just be gentle, be kind to yourself and trust the process, trust your journey. And I hope that this episode was helpful for you. That's some signs of burnout and ways that I work through burnout and ways I talk and coach to my clients about how to work through burnout in their life. If you're interested in learning more on how to work through your burnout and interested in booking a one-time session with me and we can really map out interrupting your burnout cycle will look like in your life reach out and we can book a session one time together to get that going i leave you with so much love today and take good care of yourself and because you do that we'll be able to take care of each other much better too Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. I trust that you took away some gems, some highlights for yourself in this episode. And I want to invite you to dive deeper with me if you'd like to schedule a one-on-one personalized healing session where we can really dive deeper into what's coming up for you, what you're struggling with. If you're in a place of transition in your life, whether that's relationships, careers, if you're struggling with boundaries, And we can really unpack that together and create a breakthrough session for you. Go ahead and email me at hello at aditsi.com. That's hello at aditsi.com. It's also in the show notes. I also offer a virtual master course. That's a therapeutic life healing master course that's virtual, self-paced at home. And it's guided with slides and videos of me really walking you through a three-week structured program that will help you learn about boundaries, understand fear in the brain and how it has shown up in your life. There's journal prompts and guided meditations. So go to aditsi.com and click on Virtual Master Course to see the curriculum today. And you can enroll wherever you are in the world right away and start in the comfort of your own home today. If you found any value in today's episode, please go ahead and subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. I'd love to hear from you and what you think. And I hope that you take care of yourself on your healing journey and take care of each other. 